Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luke of Parrot, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. You say you want some boob window? <laughs> well, boy, do we have some for you. That's right, and kids. And nets, too. That's right. Welcome back to episode 12 of Boob Windows and Fishnets. The Earth 3's official Power Girl Black Canary podcast. I'm Phil. I don't know, Parrish. And with me, as always, is... Hey, y'all. It's Eve Headwater. How are we doing tonight? Yeah, very good. Okay, breaking the fourth wall for a second. You really used your real first name on this thing? Yeah, Ray's not going to hear this. It'll be oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kids, don't tell Ray. Shh. <laughs> All right, so, so Eve, some of these were your picks. So, uh, what did you pick out for us uh, today? Uh, World's finest number twenty-three and Birds of Prey number thirty. Uh, excellent uh, fists of justice with a little bouncy boob for extra fun, as we always do. <laughs> I was surprised because, like, I mean, at least in the Birds of Prey, there was some uh, there's some violent content here, and I know that you know sometimes you stray a little from the violence, you know. I know, I figured since it was, you know, our first episode in April, you know, why not? Switch it up a little bit, have a little fun. April 1st, kids. On the dot. And, and, you know, since I love New 52 so much, I just, I had to, I had to pick an issue. Mm Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, I know. I was like, oh, thank God she picked New 52. I know. What what is that? What even before pre-crisis, like, what did we do? Oh, my God, I know. It's terrible. God, the Silver Age just absolutely was not my cup of tea. All you old people in your old comics. Exactly. Get with the times. Casual Friday Superman is a delight. Oh, yeah. I tried to get um our buddy Charlie Esser on here, but you know how shy he is, you know, so he really didn't want to talk oh, tonight. yeah. Yeah. Poor thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, DC is his, is his bread and butter, you know. It's mm-hmm. such a shame we lost such an expert for our episode, but... I think we'll be okay. Well, he might be recording with that ugly poor man anyway, Maz Manzor. Ugh, God, Maz. <laughs> Why do we even have him on the on the network? I swear. <laughs> so rude and unsophisticated. <laughs> Why are we talking about them? They're not even on DC. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's just uh, jump into it, shall we? All right, so which one do you want to do first? Oh, and just as a friendly reminder, this podcast is rated E for everyone, as always. That's right. Safe for work, safe for your kids and parents to listen together. Sit back and enjoy the show. That's right. You don't want to be naughty. Come on. All right, so which one did you want to do first? Uh, You can take your pick. What? You can take your pick. Okay. All right. Oh, well, why don't we start off with a... uh, the double one world's finest 23 oh perfect i can always trust phil to pick out good issues <laughs> yeah because he got power girl and huntress so all right so world's finest uh number 20 the boob window double the fun that oh that's well she really does that huntress really doesn't boob window does she in exactly. new 52 i think that was that hussy before new 52 <laughs> another reason to really enjoy new 52 honestly everybody's so covered up that's right Ah, uh, so, World's Finest, number 23 from July, 2014. <gasps> oh my, this one's rated T for teen, 12 plus. Well, and that's why we're here, because we'll keep it rated E for everyone. That's right. <laughs> oh, did you see uh, one of our commenters? I can't tell who it is, because they forgot to um, allow Facebook to uh, share their information, but someone said Power Girl greater than Supergirl. <gasps> oh my. Agree, of course. So, uh, I mean... <laughs> It's not a contest. Come on. Don't don't pit don't pit these two great women against each other. Come on. They're the same person. It's all it's all peace and love on the April ep- April first episode. Come on. But if I had to choose, I feel like Power Girl is a uh, I, I like what she stands for. You know, the loss, the confusion, the wanting to do something, the not belonging. Exactly. I know people a lot more relatable. I know some people might try to sexualize her, but 
That's not what we're here for. Come on. Exactly. Oh, that's uh, our friend Russell. Oh, thank you for rustling up to the table today, Russell. After we're done, re- as always. After we're done recording our April first episode, I have to talk to you, Russell. You and Justin. All right. So, yeah, world's finest twenty three. I must be going. Part one. JSA started my love of Power Girl. Yes, justice. The Justice Society. Wholesome heroes. That's exactly what we need. A return to form, indeed. Exactly. Uh, writer Paul Levitz, penciler R.B. Silva, and Yoldrie Sinar. Inkers, Joe, we- Joe Weems, and Yoldrie R. Sinar. Colorist Jason Wright. Letterer Carlos M. Mangual. And uh, editors Mike Cotton. So, modern uh, creators. Yay. Yeah, not those old stodgy, fuddy-duddy writers. Yeah. Been around since the six with their old values. <laughs> throwing young, helpless... Pushing, yes, yes, throwing young, helpless blondes off of bridges, leaving them to gravity's devices. Putting girls Shame. in danger, I know. Or all that or all that horrible sexual content. Say no to fridges. Say no to fridges. Lilith prays for them in church every week. I do. All right, so at her lab in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Karen Starr lifts a massive piece of equipment by herself so that she won't have to wait for a crane to do it. Much to the surprise. That's a pretty big piece of equipment. I know. Um, Who are not aware of her dual rule as Power Girl. She intends to build a portal back to her home universe, and she won't keep up any pretenses of, of not doing so to get it done faster. With the machine assembled, she and her technicians attempt a test run. But the results are disappointing as the power goes out. Oh my, yes. They, what, she like blacks out the whole city? Ooh, yeah. That, that, that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I, was, if I was stuck there, I'd want to go home. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to go home. Exactly. Relatable. You know, you're at work, you look at the clock, you just can't wait to go home. Oh, please, I know. Every day you message me and say how much you love work and you never want to leave. Yeah, that's just because my team is so great, you know, just just absolutely just peaches all of them. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, the blackout. But, you know, I have those six cats that I have to come home to. So. Mm-hmm. And three kids and the husband. You know, it, it's a whole thing over here. Yes, yes. Tell them all we you said hi. You know about that being single though. So. Yeah, t- yes, t- yes, t- yes. Tell the tell the hubby we said hi. We'll do. We'll do. Okay. Of course, he'll listen as soon as soon as it's up. So he'll hear you. Yes. The blackout in Boston. Oh, that's right. It just takes place in Boston. Uh, yes, the city of deep thinking. Yes. Oh, I hope they had a time to grab a slice of pizza. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, remember? They don't have a lot of Boston pizzas up there. I thought that were Boston no, pizza. No, no, they owners. do. At least on Earth 3, they do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that were Boston pizza. Yeah, not sure the other worlds, but, you know, that's the nice thing about being on Earth 3. That's right. You know, we have plenty of Big Belly Burgers and plenty of Boston pizzas. It's great. Um, oh, hey, Russell, I think you're looking for the Earth One Phil and Lilith. Yeah, they're not here this week. Uh, yeah, they had to jump um, in the boom tube and go handle something. They they weren't very specific. Yes, because as you can plainly see, Lilith Hellfire is not here. We have Eve Heavenwater, so. Yeah, that's, you know, that honestly, that's that's the problem with, you know, allowing multiversal travel. I know. Especially with the podcast network. It, it gets confusing. I think all those naughty drops knocked out their power. That's why they couldn't broadcast this week. Yeah, I think the FCC probably had a little chat with them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the blackout in Boston draws the attention of the Sod, who is excited by the prospects of rioting and looting. As all Earth-1 people are, I'm sure. This is this is a more relatable villain for Earth-1, but it's okay. Well, again, it's that naughty place apocalypse, isn't it? Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, it's Earth-3 Russell who drinks Mellow Yellow. I love Mellow Yellow. It, it's refreshing and delightful nice and everyone remember listen to uh russell and justin's podcast the uh heroes and you know tomes of heroes yes that's right the book of heroes that's right so earth 3's favorite hero podcast uh, as it happens the blackout was caused by a sudden drain on the seabrook nuclear plant and three states have been affected on the campus of MIT, Huntress hopes that she was not responsible for the blackout. She gives up on her plan to download the school's research reactor code, reactor's codes and heads up to the roof, only to find that the entire city is in the dark. What a bummer. Gotta see where you're going. I know. Or you might, you might, you might harm an innocent civilian. <sighs> I know. That would be unfortunate. 
Uh, Can you meanwhile, imagine crippling your crippling your enemies instead of sitting down and having coffee and figuring out what's at the heart of their issues? Could you imagine? Helping get them into therapy? I know. Violence never solves anything. Meanwhile, three international students who have been studying to break into the reactor room for weeks take the blackout as a boon, hoping to make bombs from the radioactive material they will find there. Oh, naughty boys. When they get inside the building, though, they find one of the security guards has already been knocked unconscious. Huntress spots them and follows them into the reactor room, surprising them and knocking the weapons from their hands. But one of them escapes. Karen... Uh, Karen knows the blackout is her fault and decides the best thing to do is to go to Seabrook and make sure its generators are kicking out enough power for her to successfully run the device. As she approaches though, she unexpectedly takes a shot from a tank straight in the gut. Angrily, oh no, those, those naughty soldiers ripped her uniform. I know! What a shame. That's such a great outfit. She's gonna have to get a sewing kit ASAP. And we might, and we might see extra skin, you soldiers. How dare you? Heroes don't show skin. Come on. Uh, yeah, look at Batman. Batman waiting for marriage. That's right. Exactly. Uh, so she angrily grabs the tank up off the ground and tosses it, complaining that she came to help the soldiers uh, as the soldiers riddle her with ineffective bullets. She warns them to check her security clearance with Amanda Waller and waits. Well, Amanda Waller, my favorite character. She can do no wrong. You know, she she just sees the big picture at every level and just willing to fight the good fight no matter the cost. She works for the government. Kind of like Peacekeeper. She works for the government. Of course we can trust her. Exactly. They know what's best for us. That's right. Meanwhile, never question them, kids. Come on. Meanwhile, one of Kara's employees from the lab, Tanya Spears, tries to make her way back to Boston in the blackout. But the darkness and That Tanya Spears? Mm Mm-hmm. I swear I heard... Yeah, she showed up in this issue. I thought I heard someone on Earth 1 was going to do cosplay years ago, but I don't know. I think they decided on a Riri Williams cosplay instead. Oh! I believe that was that was the thing. I don't think Earth 1 ever saw that either. Well, maybe Earth 3 will do it for Halloween. Oh, nice! <gasps> oh my I mean, god. Riri Williams is, is going to be a very big thing coming here shortly, so... You know what would be a great thing to put up on social media when this drops on April 1st? A picture of you and the husband... And the family. And the cats. That yeah. would be oh, yeah. Should, I should. You know what? Yeah. Just remind me. I think I think all our friend all our podcasting friends would love to see that. Okay, I will. I'll get get right on that. Okay. You know, I have to set, sort through my craft room with all those, you know, uh books and stuff. You know, the scrapbooks and stuff. I have to find just the right picture. All your knit all your knitting supplies and knitting, crocheting, yeah. My my cricket, you know. Yeah. Uh uh-huh. But the darkness and the cold is making her nervous. Rightly so. Wait. Uh, yeah. Tanya Spears make her way through Boston the blackout. But the darkness and cold is making her nervous. Rightly so because Desaad has chosen her. Undeterred by his frightening appearance, she decides that he's a boogeyman and just walks through him. <sighs> Such language. He disappears, but behind her, on the Longfellow Bridge, Huntress speeds past, riding atop the getaway vehicle of the remaining would-be terrorist. When the car crashes nearby, he gets out and takes Tanya hostage. Warning Huntress to jump off the bridge or Tanya will die. <sighs> hey, remember, I don't know if you um have the, the floppy of this one, but uh, when I was rereading it, I saw a great ad for that Jeff Johns, John Romita Jr., and Klaus Jansen Superman number 32. Oh, yeah. Excellent issue. A classic, a different, definite keeper must have in your collection. I don't know. I mean, that was good, but I remember when he like he lost most of his power and Superman was in a t-shirt and jeans. That was my favorite. Yes, casual. Look, listen, casual Friday Superman is my favorite Superman. Really brought him down to earth. More relatable, you know, in his prime of 25. You know, lots to learn, lots to do. And I know people Who have. Am I? Where am I? You know. I know people have their own preferences, but I mean, like I know, like our friend Connor McKenna doesn't like New Fifty Two, but we love it. New Fifty Two is the bee's knees. Oh yeah. It, it's definitely the best starting point ever for any comic book company. Oh, especially the ever done. especially the Superman and Justice League stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just wipe everything away. Just restart. You know, even if it's a little convoluted and jumbled, it, it ended up making sense in the end somehow, some way, and I appreciate it for that. But they didn't like tweak Batman or Green Lantern too much, and I'm like, why? Because they were perfect. <sighs> I don't know. You know, because but... I, of course, like Will Allred, love how Jordan does he? Earth one. Oh yeah, Earth, Earth one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know. Uh, we know. Um, Earth three. Will Allred loves Kyle Rayner. <laughs> yes. 
Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh oh, but you guys should listen to uh our friend Ray on or Earth Three Ray on his show. Uh oh, he left us a drop. Why don't you play it? Uh, Batman, my favorite character. Mm-hmm. You know, Into the Dark Knight. You know. Oh yes, Into the Dark Knight. All to do with Batman. See, so yes. I cannot wait to listen to it. I mean, I know we have a Batman podcast, but you know, we're we're not as in depth. We don't have as in depth knowledge as Ray about Batman. And I, oh, I know. I love listening to it. He just always brings up such great points. I be- on Earth three. Here. I can't believe how much that man loves Batman. I think he even has a Batman tattoo across his chest. I bow to Ray's knowledge of the Batman. And yes, kids, you should listen to Ray's Batman show. It is the biggest batman show on the internet right now into the dark night all to do with batman i heard he got a private screening of the batman oh yeah i heard he i heard like, he's, yeah i heard he's trying to set up interviews with like you know robert pattinson zoe kravitz yeah that man's on fire you know because again it's it's all batman huge all the, batman fan it's like, all the ba- just, every picture we, we just bow in awe honestly every picture i see him and finn are in batman t-shirts i don't know you know batman and robin the wife's uh you know Cassandra yeah Kane. It's amazing. They eat. That family eats, sleep, sleeps, and dreams. Batman. Batman. Oh, you know, na 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 sausage man. Uh-huh. <laughs> Even his theme music had to be Batman inspired. I know he requested this from Russell. Sausage man. Sausage man. We don't need that kind of salty language here, Russell. He's got a Batman symbol down under. How dare you? This is a this is a all ages podcast. This is a wholesome podcast that the whole family can listen to on road trips because you know the gas is only sixty eight sixty nine cents a gallon here on Earth Three. Mm-hmm. You know, you know the few remaining cars that use fossil fuels. Most of us are electric or solar. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hybrid because you know sometimes you want you want to rev the engine a little. You know, I can basically fill it up for four dollars and twenty cents. So that's nice. Oh, yeah, of course, because you have that big family. You have that, what, hybrid minivan. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, thoughts on uh, World's Finest 23? I think it was a, a fun collab, and uh, it's a, such a shame we can't um, finish to see the ending. Maybe we'll circle back around to it eventually. But, yeah, I, I kind of liked what they were doing with World's Finest, where they kind of gave the female characters a chance to shine. Because usually, you know, when you think World's Finest, you think Batman and Superman. <laughs> You know, but the, at this time, they were definitely not trying to oversaturate the market with them. And, you know, I can appreciate that. Yeah, no. And again, if, you know, with the return of the multiverse, they can do like an Earth 2 Huntress again. And Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to it. You know, and that, you know, it's just like that show Birds of Prey. It's an excellent show. I highly recommend it. Um, every time I get a chance, it's like, oh, if you liked Arrow and all the all the canaries, canaries, I think you'd like Birds of Prey. Oh, Birds of Prey season four was the best. I don't know, man. I think the season five series finale was oh. mm, chef's kiss. I think I don't think the Flash could top it. It's been the best out of all the BT shows I've ever seen. Yeah, even but even Smallville, even Smallville, and you know how how much I rave about that ending of Smallville. I can't sign off. You on... know, twenty seasons is a long time. I can't sign off on season five of Birds of Prey because that's when they introduced Nightwing, and I'm just like, <clears throat> come on. I mean, at least he had the mullet and he went by Rick. Oh, true. So, yeah. I mean, there were highlights. There were highlights. They did put the best stuff in there. Yeah, that is true. Oh, Russell's. I'm sorry, Russell. I misjudged you. No, guys. He's from Australia. Silly gooses. But Australia on Earth 3 is near Greenland, so it's not the land down under. <laughs> it's all one big land mass, isn't it? Yeah. With Pangea? Our, with our boom that tubes and pronounced? with our boom tubes and teleporters. Exactly. All right. So we do have one more issue. Um... Birds of Prey number 30 that we can talk about. Yes, and again, we got some, uh, yes, we did get some feedback on Power Girl from uh, Justin the uh, Hawk out Osgood, so uh, we can play some of that. I'll probably say most of it for the podcast itself, so. Yeah, I can't wait to just, just hear what he thought just briefly. We, yeah, we don't want to keep you too long, you well, know. Yeah, like if you're watching this on MeTube, yeah, you're going to have to go to the podcast to see, uh, hear the rest of it, so. Sorry, guys, but, you know, we got to direct that traffic to the podcast somehow. You know, we're so shy about self-promotion. Yes. I mean, I mean again, we, were, we were, if we want to have a big, huge podcast like Ray's Batman podcast, yeah, we got to, you know. We really do have to work on that. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. I hope I hope word of, this, of the, all this uh, compliments gets back to him so he listens to this episode. 
Yeah, he said he, you know, he's such a big, big podcaster. You know, he just doesn't have as much time for us as he's too. So, guys, just spread the word. Let him know we're thinking about him. Yeah, tell him we, 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 we really love his Batman podcast. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. Uh Oh, yes, of course, Russell. Of course I love seeing Maxi Zeus in The Batman. Well, you know, they did, they did spoil it, you know, well, in the last trailer. But, you know, you got to get the fans hyped. Call I him, get it. I don't know. Colin Richard F- Kine was amazing as the Penguin, wasn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, Colin Farrell. I mean, you knew he was Maxi Zeus. Maxi Zeus, come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Out of left field, didn't think it worked, but he worked it. Redeemed for Bullseye. Although I mean, he had nothing to be redeemed for. It. Bullseye was a pretty perfect role for him. I know, but man, he rocked that show. Can't toast. believe Daredevil got like five movies. <laughs> I know. Although they did replace him. They did replace him with Matt Damon in the last one, but you know. I mean, I mean, has any movie topped the box office for that first Daredevil movie? No, I don't think so. I mean, you know that 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 was before Sony bought Marvel, though. You know, yeah. You know the downfall of Marvel and their their extended universe. Ugh. Oh, I know that last that last Spider Man. I mean, how old is Tobey Maguire? Sixty. Yeah, I know. I mean, just that that Snyderverse just dominates them. You know. Glad he, he brought a he brought a few people aboard, and we have a really good, solid, extended movie universe. Well, yeah, well, yeah when you build it on four the four hours breezed by, it was just I wanted more. Well, when you build that whole foundation for that whole thing on Ezra Miller, of course it's going to succeed. Yeah, gotta love Ezra Miller. Such a peach, a real ball. Such a great per- human being. Totally. All we right. Should all be more like Ezra. That's true. God bless Ezra Miller. Uh, to, yes, Russell. Yes. R- Yes, yeah, so that's one of Marvel's strengths. They have ten Hulk films, yes. And ten different actors, but, you know. I mean, that Planet Hulk was pretty that's good. That's the fun, yeah. yeah. Planet Hulk, yeah, that was awesome. I can't, I, I heard, I heard we're getting a series where it's set in Las Vegas. Oh, oh. I don't know, you know might be. that means, Peak Hulk, baby. I don't know, but that Grey Hulk is so overplayed. I mean, and it, if it's set, that whole Vegas thing, it's going to get kind of like, uh, Raunchy, oh, it isn't might it? get a little raunchy, but yeah. I trust them to exercise their judgment. I don't need to see. I don't need to hear bad language and see nudity or anything. No, come on. I'm just worried about the gambling, to be honest. True, as long true. As they don't show too much of the gambling, I think I'll be okay. And I know, I know how much you hate drinking. So yeah. Just ugh. people who drink are the scum of the earth. I'm sorry for such a strong stance. <gasps> oh my God! Can you imagine if there might even be like marijuana use in there? You know, they don't call it Sin City for nothing, kiddo. I know. I know. That's why you It's you've the ne- world we live in. That's why you you've know. never gone. I know. Your church group told you never to go there, and you have never gone there. I know. I, I don't go past Mississippi. No, sir. Anything past Mississippi is bad. West Coast is bad. All right. It's so all sh- about the East Coast. All about New Jersey. True. True. The oh. of goodness and Wait. virtue, of course. So you mean, oh, you mean New Jersey, heaven on earth? Okay. Yes. yes. I agree with that. Okay. All right, so, should we get to the Birds of Prey issue? Oh, let's. Let's do that. All right. So, Birds of Prey number, well, volume three, number 30, from June 2014. So, did you do that on purpose? Did you pick two issues from, wait, was the other one 2014 or 2015? Yeah, the other one was 2014, I believe. Okay, so, yeah, did you pick, was that just a coincidence, or did you just pick two from 2014? Uh, I think it might have been a coincidence, but it was a very good year. I felt like New 52 was really solidifying at that third year marker. Everything was kind of coming together that they had planned out, so. Yeah, but, it, I mean, that's hard to pick because there's so much goodness from that New 52. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I like a lot of the beginning stuff. And, mm-hmm. like, I, I, I'll give you, like, year two. I was kind of like, okay. Mm. And then year three just picked it right up and, like, put me right back in the saddle, so. I mean, I know, again, I, I keep, I, I don't mean to keep going back to this, but on, uh, Ray and Connor's uh, Into the Night, the Dark, the Dark Knight podcast. I mean, they always poo-poo on New 52, and I don't know why. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. Well, not, not, not to be, not to be a chatty Kathy, but you know, Ray is old and stuck in his ways. I get it, you know. How, oh, very funny, Lil. Ha ha, you know he's the youngest one of all of us. Come on. I know, but he can be a bit of a curmudgeon. He's, he's very old school. Not, nothing wrong with that, but. New 
MCU is just it's just it's the era that re- you know just reigned supreme and brought in all the fans and you know no controversy whatsoever. It was just it just really was like the began the next golden age of DC comics. I know. I mean, I think Ray just seems like a curmudgeon because just because of the attitude Connor always has. I mean, he's always upbeat. He always he loves everything they read. I mean, it's yes, that's true. Connor does love everything. Oh my god, that's I, what we love him for. You know, I call him Rainbow Bright. He's always so cheerful and happy. Yeah. Like that, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on his Facebook and just remind him he's our rainbow braid. April 1st, kids, spread the word about all these podcasts we're talking about. So, and, and remember all these podcasters we mentioned. You know, sh- sh- give them a shout out when this drops on April 1st. All right, uh, all right. So, Birds of Prey number 30, June 2014, Soul Crisis. Yeah, that's when you run the church, right, Lil? Exactly. All right, writer Christy Marks, uh, penciler Robson Roca, and Scott McDaniel. Oh! Scott McDaniel? Oh, boy! <laughs> he works with that very serious man, Mr. D.G. Chichester. Yes. Or he did. Yes. That man who abhors uh, sarcasm. Uh, anchor John... Truly the worst form of communication. That's... Oh. I know. There's something wrong with you if you, if you're too sar- if you use sarcasm as a, as a defense mechanism, you know? Yeah. Oh! Russell's Russell's favorite uh, creator he brought up. He loves Rob Liefeld. Yes. Oh, you know, I love his proportions. And he draws the perfect feet. Like, I never noticed until Bleeding Cool did an article about him. And now that, I, now that they've written that article, I can't unsee it. Perfect. Oh, and he had, the, he had the definitive Captain America run. Come on, you know. You know oh, you, you, that, that shoulder to chest ratio? Oh, yeah. You love Captain America. That's one of your favorite characters. You know that. I mean, not as much as I love U.S. Agent. Of oh, US yeah. Agent is superior to Captain America, you know. But I feel like that only because Chris Evans played U.S. Agent. I don't know if he would have played Captain America. I might feel a little different, but I heard know, Chris. I think, I, think, I think that's what it is. I heard Chris Evans can come to you, can come with you and your husband to church anytime, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Yes. Speaking of fine young Boston people, yes. Oh yes, yes. Uh, Inker Jonathan Glapion. He can come play with the six cats anytime. I'm sure. Uh, colors Chris Sotomayor, uh, letterer Desi Santi, and, well, three editors. Golly gosh. Mark Dole, Rachel Glockstern, and Darren Shan. Well, again, New 52 had a lot of moving parts. Lots That's of true. eyeballs on the project, you know, to keep it streamlined and understandable. You create the continuity. You and know? you create the perfect new universe. Yeah, I guess you do. You know, you need a lot of hands. You want to make sure everybody's following that script, that, that well plotted, you know, playbook. That perfect plan they put together. Yes, they crossed every I, I you know, they dotted Here's every I, crossed every T. Yeah. And, and the plot twist that it was all planned since the first crisis. It just. Blew my mind. I know. It all just tied together and just made perfect sense. I thought something like continuity might... came together. Just mwah, I thought good. I thought something would fall through the cracks, but they had planned for every contingency or a- any possibility. It's like the real life Batman. It was amazing. I know. Marvel could never. I mean, they had, it seems like they knew Batman almost as well as Ray. Into the dark night, all to do with Batman. Again, we just love that show. So again. You hear this? Please, please shout out. It's at Ray Ray Pod. Yes, tell him how much you love his Batman show. Even if you have never heard it before, just, yes, you listen to this episode. Shout out Ray Ray Pod on Twitter. Tell him you love his Batman show because he loves praise. You know, he loves to spread the word of Batman. So it will just make his day if you tell him you love his Batman show, even if you have never heard it. Because he just, he just loves it when he thinks more people are coming to Batman. Okay, uh, so I do want to bring up a point about this Birds of Prey issue. Um, why, why I picked this because I feel like Ra's al Ghul is such an underutilized, you know, very unknown character. You know? I, I was like, oh yeah, Ra's al Ghul. We haven't seen him in a long time. Never been in a movie or a TV show. What are they waiting on? I know. I know. So yeah, I think that's another reason why I probably picked it. I mean... <laughs> There's like certain certain characters. I'm like, I don't know why don't they don't use them more. It's like Razo, Goal, the Joker. Joker. What? Why do you ever hear about what the Joker? To him I know. Prices. I mean, maybe because that '89 movie, Batman '89 movie bombed. It's like they don't want to like touch him. You, you know. You know, and you know when you look back on it, that that Batmania, the 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 fake. You can just see the fakeness of that Batmania. You know that they tried to create. 
It just really turned a lot of people off. I mean, bring back the Joker. Everywhere I look anymore, it's like, all I see it's is that... It's the Riddler, it's the Penguin, it's Maxi Zoo. No! It's no! It's Every uh, He gets movies and miniseries, and every two seconds, it's Killer Moth, Killer Moth, Killer Moth. Darn it, I'm sick of it. Oh, uh, you know... Sorry, sorry to get so salty, but, you know, darn it. Well, yeah, I am kind of sick of Killer Moth between us hens, but, you know, what are you going to do? He may, he sells the most toys. Can't go down a toy aisle without seeing a Killer Moth action figure. T-shirts. It's it's ridiculous. And, you know, his sidekick, Butterfly Girl, she's everywhere, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Russell. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is Alan Scott. Oh, yeah. That was probably the, that, that Green Lantern movie was probably the best thing before the Snyderverse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, whatever happened to Ryan Reynolds? It was such a shame he never went anywhere after that movie. I know. I know. I think he's toiling away in the Archie universe. Oh. Uh, Yikes. Uh, all right. So, let's get to Birds of Prey number 30. Boy, we're all over the place tonight. Golly gosh. Uh, the Birds of Prey are barely holding their own against the first wave of Ra's al Ghul's League of Assassins as they protect Mother Eve and her barge. They have been asked to do so for the next few hours while Mother Eve completes her metamorphosis, the secret to her immortality that Ra's al Ghul seeks. The very last line of defense is Black Canary, whose loyalty to Mother Eve may be in question, given the promises Ra's al Ghul made to her. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot Condor was in this issue as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I know, Russell. We so, love bird theme, you know, bird themed. Uh, yes. Yes, Russell. I, I know. We're all waiting on pins and needles for Stone Cold Steve Austin to play back at Black Adam. I know. Yeah, you can't, you can't throw a stone. Without seeing a movie with Steve Austin in it. I know, and then he has that NBC. The young, the young, you know, Steve Austin TV show is pretty good, though. I know. Young Stone Cold, I know. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Every movie, every other movie. Uh, Black I think Can- Jumanji's my favorite movie, though. Oh, that yeah. Been. That reboot, I hope that goes on for ten movies. Yes. But again, I mean, I know it's a popular, it sells billion, billion dollar movies, but again, it's... Jared Leto, enough Killer Moth, okay? Yeah, I really wish he would get back in, you know, go back into his orchestra phase. Yes. Go, like, you know, just do a tour and conduct. I know. Get back in the pit and start, yeah, come on. All right. Black, Black Canary, meanwhile, struggles with the knowledge that Mother Eve has placed her trust in her while she is still considering the deal with Roz. Uh, if she allows him to learn Mother Eve's secrets, he will give her the means to bring her husband, Kurt, back to his former self. After years of being comatose, uh, taking that deal would give her Kurt back, but it would also betray everything that she is as well. Uh, so see, I kind of like that, you know, per, they kind of gave her a husband, you know, so she's not like living in sin with that Oliver Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, New 52. Uh. I don't know. Um, I, I do feel like the... The whole mother thing came out of nowhere, though, unfortunately. that that That's the only nitpick that I will give. Yeah. Um, and, you know, usually, like, this is, like, kind of a different... I think why I really actually, too, like it is because it's a different turn for Birds of Prey, like, going against, like, you know, supernatural stuff instead of street level. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was a bold choice to go in. But can they put the... Put the can they put the poor young lady in some pants? Come on. You know, honestly, that is my favorite costume, um, is when she gets the, the full black... With the little gold. That's my favorite Black Canary one. Oh, really? Yeah, when they just, they, they really gave her the modern update, took away the fishnets, you know. I thought you were going to say the Justice League one where she had, like, the big black thing coming off and, like, she was pretty much completely covered. And Well, that looks fun, too. That, now, that's a cosplay. Speaking of which, kids, Lil Hellfire keeps haranguing me to, uh, she wants to join me and Will and talk some Guy Gardner, but I'm like, well, I'm like, we'll get there, we'll get there. Really? What? I, I thought she was a Kyle Rayner fan. I had no idea. Kyle's okay, but you know, Guy's the man. Come on. He is. He did punch Batman once. Oh, that's one you punch? You get the drop on Batman. One punch. I'm sorry, Ray, but yeah, he dropped Batman with one punch. And then then he got Hal Jordan kicked out of the Green Lantern Corps for a while when he beat him in that fight. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Hal, he's not, He you know, poor guy only had one chance at a book. Oh, yeah. Lasted. Austin, Pretty uh, obscure. Yeah. Like 40 issues, yeah. Uh, so where was I at? Uh, 
Oh yeah, Condor made his own deal with the demon's head, having fallen in love with Black Canary some time ago. Oh my, his jealousy when Kurt came back into the picture led him to beg Roz to have Kurt killed during the attack. All he has to do is look away and let things progress as Roz wants. Then, Dinah will be his. However, the deal he made weighs on him, and he decides that he ought to go down to the infirmary and protect Kurt from the men he asked to have him killed. Uh, Ra's uncle's second wave of attack brings smoke bombs with it, and by the time Batgirl gets the smoke cleared from the deck, she can only assume that Ra's slipped past her defense in the interim, leaving the rest of the battle up to Dinah. Outside Mother Eve's chamber, Dinah hears Ra's coming, and soon the door opens to prove her right. He wonders if the sample of Lazarus pit fluid he provided her was effective, and she agrees that it was, though her trust is not so easily won. Smirking, Roz presents her with the rest of the cure, suggesting she go to her husband and reap the rewards of a wise decision. Cautiously, she reaches for it, but cannot bring herself to take it. Instead, she kicks it from his hand, destroying it. Angrily, Roz reminds that she is sacrificing her every happiness for an old woman who cares nothing for her brief life. Diana responds, Diana responds that whatever Mother Eve might think of her, her husband would not forgive her for making the wrong choice. Annoyed, Roz orders her killed and an assassin appears behind her with a garret. Whipped out of his grip, she recognizes him as one of the same men who had attacked her years ago during the storm in Gotham City. Oh, was that zero? Was that like a zero year crossover or whatever? I believe so. Yeah, they did that with a bunch of the books. It might have been, I don't know if it was all of them, but there was a ton of books in that, you know. Well, you know, so many great characters, you, you, you kind of just want to share the world. And again, you got to give Batman attention because he doesn't get, get, get that much attention. I know, right? Like, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Guy Gardner, reading the, the Lantern Corps, would be yeah. selling all these books. Like, every other book spinoff. It's Guy Gardner this, Guy Gardner that. Either that or Booster Gold. Yeah. But at, at least he lets, at least he lets, um, he lets the Flash tag along. So that's nice. That's true. You know the Flash. He, he needs all the help. Oh, yeah. She breaks free of his grip and rushes down the hallway to the deck where Strix is waiting to engage him, giving Dinah the opportunity to return to stop Roz. Though Strix is wounded, her status as a Talon prevents it from killing her, and she retains the strength and presence of mind to see that her quarry is killed and thrown over the side of the barge. Dinah manages to catch up before Roz al Ghul can get into the locked room where Mother Eve is resting. Despite Roz's warning that he is protected from her canary cry, she has since realized that the room she was stationed in was designed as an amplifier just for her. She re- unleashes her cry, fill- shaggy. <laughs> she filling the room with a powerful screech that drops Roz to his knees. By the time her scream subsides, the door to Mother Eve's room opens from the inside and outsteps a much younger woman, a ten-year-old child, who explains that Dinah's job is done. Ra's al Ghul's opportunity to learn her secret has passed, and with disdain, he warns that he will return, accounting for the lessons he learned today, and one day he will grind his heel on Dinah's grave. Oh my. Uh. That's the one thing about Raz. He is very dramatic and very rude. I mean, the man has a daughter himself. You'd think he'd be a better feminist. Yes. Yes. I mean, because, you know, all the, you know, all, all old people are, you know, are deep, you know, are. Yeah, yeah. Take people's it is what it is. feelings into account. Yes. With some surprise, Dinah watches as Roz and his men simply leave with nothing more to be gained. Mother Eve explains that at this young age, she now has an entire life ahead of her and the benefit of her many centuries of memories to inform it. She directs Dinah's attention to the splattered fluid that had been Roz's cure for Kurt and suggests she smell the chemical within. Dinah recognizes its bitter almond odor as cyanide. The deal had been a lie. Roz would never share his most precious, precious resource. No more than Mother Eve would share hers. Mother Eve explains that it is part of Ra's al Ghul's madness that he only sees the worst in others. But she knew all along that the good in Dinah was enough to ensure that she would not fall victim to his scheme. Many hours later, Mother Eve and the birds of prey say their goodbyes and brace themselves for whatever is to come. <sighs> good story, but so violent. I know, and it's such a shame that Night Lord, one of the League of Assassin members, this is like his apparent death, favorite member you know such a return to form mm-hmm. and i was just like oh and, and just like that he's gone yes oh no good thing russell uh who won oh, i think i think or two won you, so you're being strangled by yourself russell oh my the chickens have come home to the roost uh <laughs> so yeah um i 
I think it was uh, two very good issues. Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. All right, so do you want to hear a little bit of feedback from Justin the Hawk out, Osgood? Of course I do. All right, so like I said, kids, for the full feedback, listen to the, uh, this episode will drop April 1st, so if you're watching this on YouTube. But, uh, oh, who loves Batman? No one loves Batman more than Ray Russell. Come on. He has that wildly successful Batman show. It's the number one in, on iTunes. Come on. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. Me too. Because people just sense his passion for Batman. That's how he gets the number one. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. Noel Tate loves Batman more than Howie the Mouse. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. I know. I know Noel loves Batman too, but I think Ray might beat him out just I mean, Ray's been doing hair. this since the beginning of the internet, you know. Ray. <laughs> He told me, he's told me stories that his first words were, I love Batman. I mean, come on. I mean, when you're in it since you're like a toddler, come on. I mean, he begged his parents. His first words were, I you know, I want Batman toys. I'm, I'm pretty sure his classifier had a Batman emblem. I think I saw that baby picture. I tried to get, you know, it's supposedly his whole life, people have been trying to get him into Marvel. And he's like, no, I only want to read Batman. It's all Batman. You look at it. You look, his, his man cave, when he records, it's all Batman on the walls. Pictures, posters, comics, toys, all of it. It's, 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 it's the quintessential Batman museum, if we're going to be honest. Oh, yeah. And I heard uh, I heard George Clooney's his favorite Batman, too. Well, you know, excellent choice, excellent choice. Mm -hmm. he, re he revived the franchise, you know. Um, daring costume, totally paid off. All right, so I'm sorry, kids. This sounds like an advertisement for Ray's uh, wildly successful Batman podcast, but no. Uh, all right, so here we go. Here's some feedback. Uh, like I said, the first few minutes of uh, Justin the Hawk Osgood's uh, Power Girl. He has shared us some thoughts on Power Girl. So, all right, what did you think, Justin? Hello there, my friends. It's your old pal Justin the Owl here to give you some of my favorite Power Girl moments. As both of you know, I'm a huge Justice Society fan. They're my favorite superhero team, and always have been. And I love that Power Girl has had a long-standing membership with the team. I feel like she's a perfect fit with the team. And so a lot of the, a lot of her adventures I have read within the pages of JSA and Justice Society's related stuff. And that's actually where my three favorite Power Girl moments come from. Um, the first one comes from JSA number 39. And in this issue, Power Girl has a super-powered stalker, basically, who is obsessed with her. And she, <laughs> she deals with him in a fashion that only Power Girl can. But the, the best part, the, the most memorable part, and I feel like this is the, the quintessential Power Girl moment here, was at the end where she's telling Hawk Girl and Star Girl about what happened. Um, and she says, you two are all right. And I'm going to let you tell you guys a secret. I've got a rep for being stubborn, headstrong, and brash. I'm called a lot of things behind my back by other heroes. Main one rhymes with witch. And I'll be honest, it's not an act. Not completely. Oh my God. I do have confidence. I am smarter than a lot of the other costume cops out there, and maybe I could learn a thing or two about mutual respect. But you have to understand something, girls. If I was power man, if I was stubborn, headstrong, and brash, if I didn't take to authority well, no one would think anything of it. Do I worry about what others think? Sometimes. But am I going to hold back and follow their lead? Play sidekick and girlfriend? Be a cheerleader for their football team? Hell no. So my advice is simple. Always show them what you got. <laughs> girl power. You go, girl. I <laughs> love that line so much. I feel like that was perfect. That's the perfect, really, the quintessential power girl moment, I have to say. I love it. With some great dialogue. Wonder Woman could never. Jeff Johns wrote that. Who? Oh, yeah. And I have two other moments, too, also from JSA, which I thought of immediately when I thought of my favorite Power Girl moments. Ah, uh, no. Cutting you off. You gotta, gotta download the podcast, kids. Oh, Philip, what a sneaky little tease. Again, if we want to if we want to spread this wholesome entertainment uh, far and wide, man, we need more people to download the podcast. So true. So true. All right. So, anything else? <laughs> 
not at all. I think we should definitely give the kids their homework. Oh, well, I do know. I mean, hopefully we'll be back someday, kids. But, uh, yeah, Earth Maybe One. Maybe next April. Yes, Earth One Film will we'll be back next week uh, talking to Mr. J.M.D. Mateus about all his uh, Justice League work. So, you don't want to miss that. I mean, come on. Earth One J.M.D. Mateus, come on. Uh... It's such a B.A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh... Wonder if, oh, I wonder if those Earth One kids could get Earth One DG Chichester to say, uh, DG Chichester is, I am such a being. Uh, no, he is actually way too modest for that. I know, I know. So, yes, so the Earth One schedule can move, uh, going forward. JMD Mateus next week. In two weeks, uh, Film Wolf will cover JLA Secret Files and Origins number one. And then in three weeks, part one of the crossover with Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. Oh, boy. Where they'll cover uh, the first four issues of uh, Grant Morrison's JLA. So, yes. The first Grant two. Morrison. Nuff said. Nuff said. Yes, the first two issues. <laughs> oh, yes. So, the first two issues will be on, uh, yes, their Unlimited Justice podcast. And the second two issues will be on Sector 2814. Nice. I always love a good crossover. Yes. Uh, Alright, so. With Will Noble. <laughs> that's right. Will Gardner. Uh, so. If you love uh, this wholesome entertainment that you've heard this week, uh, share your thoughts. My Earth One Double will send us our feedback. Uh, email capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And I'm sure you Earth One people can't get to uh, our, uh, our our face place uh, or uh, the... the uh, the, the bird app so uh yeah send them the capes and lunatics uh un, unlimited justice will forward all our stuff they're on facebook they're on twitter uh and again subscribe Man, to it's such a bummer earth one doesn't have myspace anymore myspace here is amazing i know i know it's a utopia where everyone is nice to each other no no false information no. or anything no no people randomly just attacking each other yeah no uh Oh, but uh, they are they were they were nice enough to let us share this episode on their YouTube channel. So subscribe to their YouTube channel. You can see this. You can see, you could you could uh, meet Eve Heavenwater herself. See you know. Uh, and again, subscribe to their Patreon because they like to share with us. So yeah, you know they 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 might need a fund for their mother boxes and boom tubes. You know. <gasps> oh, that's right for our uh, yes for when we cross over because yeah they're doing a show on Earth three right now so. Yeah. We need we a trans- want them to come home. We need a transmatter cube. So yes, so yes, please uh, if you can help us support uh, their Patreon or they were so nice enough to let us on their uh, on their podcast. Yeah, go pick up their uh, t shirt, their Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics. Oh, they sent me a cup. Me too. Very nice. I know. So yeah, so find all of that at Linktree L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. All right. Eve Heaven Water, what would you like to promote? Uh, nothing. Just I want you kids to be good to each other. No drinking, no smoking, and remember, no sex before marriage. Every week with you, I know that's a, that's your that's your mission, right? It is indeed, sir. Well, the pastors tell you to say it. I know you. Oh well, again, kids. I mean, not only is she a big church goer, her husband is a is a pastor. Come on. Yes, preacher's wife. Oh, that. Yeah. She's a very good preacher's wife. So when are you guys going to have another kid? Let me recover from the last one. It's only been three months, though. Jeez. <laughs> Number five, huh? Uh, Plot till you drop. Yep, that's the motto over here. All right, kids. So thanks for joining us on Earth 3. Hopefully, like I said, we'll hopefully we'll be back soon. So until then, yeah, be nice to each other. Bye-bye. Hello there, my friends. It's your old pal, Justin the Owl, here to give you some of my favorite Power Girl moments. As both of you know, I'm a huge Justice Society fan. They are my favorite superhero team, and always have been. And I love that Power Girl has had a long-standing membership with the team. I feel like she's a perfect fit with the team. And so a lot of the 
a lot of her adventures I have read within the pages of JSA and Justice Society's related stuff. And that's actually where my three favorite Power Girl moments come from. Um, the first one comes from JSA number 39. And in this issue, Power Girl has a super-powered stalker, basically, who is obsessed with her. And she <laughs> she deals with him in a fashion that only Power Girl can. But the, the best part, the, the most memorable part, and I feel like this is the, the quintessential Power Girl moment here, was at the end where she's telling Hot Girl and Star Girl about what happened. Um, and she says... You two are all right, and I'm going to let you tell you guys a secret. I've got a rep for being stubborn, headstrong, and brash. I'm called a lot of things behind my back by other heroes. Main one rhymes with witch. And I'll be honest, it's not an act. Not completely. I do have confidence. I am smarter than a lot of the other costumed cops out there. And maybe I could learn a thing or two about mutual respect. But you have to understand something, girls. If I was power man, if I was stubborn, headstrong, and brash, if I didn't take to authority well, no one would think anything of it. Do I worry about what others think? Sometimes. But am I going to hold back and follow their lead? Play sidekick and girlfriend? Be a cheerleader for their football team? Hell no. So my advice is simple. Always show them what you got. I love that line so much. I feel like that was perfect. That's the perfect, really, the quintessential Power Girl moment, I have to say. I love it. With some great dialogue. Jeff Johns wrote that. And I have two other moments, too, also from JSA, which I thought of immediately when I thought of my favorite Power Girl moments. Um, one of them comes later on in JSA, and I have to find the issue number, because I forgot it already. Um, it's issue number 47, I believe. Um, this is in the Princes of Darkness storyline, and it's, I think, possibly my favorite story out of that JSA run. And in that storyline, Mordru possesses the body of Hector Hall as Dr. Fate, and all hell breaks loose. He takes down most of the JSA quickly, um, with his newfound power, but Power Girl challenges him. She says, Mordru, let's see how tough you are without your magic. And he says, you seek to challenge me, woman? And she says, what's the matter? Afraid you can't hold your own against a poor, defenseless little female? Or does that put a damper on your male adolescent power fantasy? And Mordru replies, let it never be said that the Dark Lord lacks gamesmanship. Come, Power Girl! And she flies at him and knocks him basically through an entire neighborhood. <laughs> Several buildings explode and a bunch of cars and things. Uh, Mordru hurls a car at her, which explodes. She comes through the burnt blazing inferno and says, Okay, kid gloves coming off now. <laughs> and then... Oh, Power Girl lays into Mordru, just punching him and punching him over and over and over again in the face, just one right after the other. And you can see the blood fly. <laughs> and then she gives him a huge uppercut, which sends him flying. And at that point, Mordru says, <laughs> he has to admit, he says, I'm impressed, woman. But I have grown tired of this game. Please die now. And he shoots a magical blaster. So just the fact that, that she was able to whoop the tar out of Mordru when it was just her and him with, without him using his magic, I thought that was fantastic. And I loved seeing her lay into him. It was so good. Um, and I have to admit, I gained a newfound respect for her after that issue. I thought that was a great part. And my third most favorite uh, Power Girl moment comes a few issues later, and I I think it's issue number, um, 
It's an issue where the Justice League and the Justice Society get together for one of their holiday dinners. <laughs> there were a few of those issues that happened in the JSA run. And this one was number 54. And the two teams are getting together, and obviously there's there's a little bit of alcohol flowing. And Wildcat, of course, has found his way into the liquor, of course. Uh, Wonder Woman has said some comments about Thanksgiving. This is a Thanksgiving dinner, actually. Um, and she's saying, I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving. However, if you're going to give thanks, you need to do it without naive innocence. If you acknowledge what you are thankful for, you must also look at what the first people of this land had to suffer through in order to give you your freedom. And then Wildcat uh, bursts in, of course, all drunk, and he goes, Wonder Woman's full of crap! The princess comes from an island of spear-throwing Amazons. What do they know about Thanksgiving? And Stargirl's like, well, she kind of has a point, Wildcat. I love America, but it's not all sugar and... And Wildcat cuts it right off. Yeah, yeah, Stargirl. The point being, she can knock the stars and stripes, but she can't look at her home with open eyes. Land of man-haters. Your mother was never causing the fuss you are. If she were around, Hippolyta would smack you upside the head for being so rude. And Power Girl gra <laughs> grabs Wildcat, essentially by the scruff of his neck. <laughs> and hurls him through an open window, which has to be probably 20 or 30 feet up in the air. This is a large dining room that they're in. Find another corner of the room to play in. <laughs> she hurls him right through the window, and Star Girl says, Wildcat! Power Girl says, Don't worry, Star. Ted always lands on his feet. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so those are my my three favorite uh, Power Girl moments that come from the pages of JSA. Although I, I also, there's a, a story, a solo Power Girl story in the pages of the short-lived JSA Classified. And I think that was actually, her story was actually the, the one that started off that series, unless I'm mistaken. But that was also a really good story. Um, and it had some amazing art from Amanda Connor. And that's another one that I go to when I want to read some good Power Girl. Um, but yeah, that's it. Just wanted to share my favorite Power Girl moments and hope you enjoyed. Can't wait to hear what yours are. And hopefully we'll see a return of the JSA and the Justice Society soon with Power Girl in their ranks. What do you think? Let's hope and pray. Let's hope that that... <laughs> That Black Adam movie is a success, so we can get the JSA back. <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. See ya.